Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, I want to go ahead and answer the second question from the first set of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics free response questions. And so, this question had you looking at the Phillips curve, which is one of the key graphs in macroeconomics. I'm sure you've drawn it many, many, many times, and so they're asking you to draw it one more time in the course. And so what they want you to do in letter A here is they want you to go ahead and draw LRPC, SRPC, and go ahead and label some values uh, that they gave you. And so let's go ahead and do that. So here is our axes here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to a uh, lighter brush here. So we've got unemployment rate, and we've got inflation rate and again writing those out very important and then we've got our short run Phillips curve downward sloping and our long run Phillips curve which is a vertical line so now we've got to put these values on the graph and there's actually four things we need to put on there this three percent this six percent this four percent and then the point X so let's start with the uh, natural rate of unemployment, which is current, which is at 4%. So where do we put that? Well, that is the unemployment rate, basically in long run equilibrium. And so it's going to be right here where LRPC hits the uh, horizontal axis at 4%. Now we know the current unemployment rate is 6%, which is greater than four, obviously. And so it's gonna go right here and that's our short run equilibrium, so we'll label that X. And so we've knocked out this one, and this one, and this one. And so now we've just got one more here, which is the, um, oh sorry, that's not the one we knocked out, we knocked out that one, excuse me. Well, we've got to uh, deal with this 3% expected inflation rate. And I think that's the part of this question that students probably struggled with the most. Um, is this idea of where do you put expected inflation? Well, we need to think of expected inflation as what happens when people who know there's going to be inflation, once they've adjusted their behavior, you know, what is that inflation rate? And so that's going to be the inflation rate at long run equilibrium. And so it's right here at 3%. And so I think that was probably the trickiest part of letter A here. It was just figuring out uh, where to put the expected inflation rate. So if you didn't get that, don't freak out, don't don't panic, because this question is likely going to be worth, I think, two points, and you're going to get a point just for drawing LRPC and SRPC. So don't freak out with these FRQs. You don't need to get every single point to do well on the AP exam. For letter B, it says, is the actual inflation rate greater than, less than, or equal to the expected inflation rate of 3%? And if you notice here, this is just multiple choice, right? We just have to pick one of these three options, and we don't have to explain, which is awesome. So what's the answer here? The answer here for letter B is going to be less than. And so well, why is that? Well, if we look here, if this is our expected rate, if I drew a dotted line over here, this is going to be our actual rate. Okay, and I, obviously I would, not, I would not draw this on your actual AP exam, but just to show you, and so the actual rate has to be lower than three. Maybe it's 2%. I mean, who knows? But we know it's got to be less than because the actual inflation rate is what we're currently dealing with in the short run, which is what SRPC represents. So the answer is less than. You don't have to explain, so don't, because if you are explaining, that's wasted time, essentially. Just put what you need to put down. All right, on to C and D, the last two parts of this question. So C says, assume loans were made... Uh, taking into account the expected inflation rate of 3%, will lenders be better off or worse off after they realize the actual inflation rate identified in Part B and explain? So if we look at this question, again, it's multiple choice, better off or worse off, and then we just have to explain. So for C, uh, the answer here is going to be better off. And the reason why, I mean, think back to when you talked about in the course this idea of who's helped and hurt by inflation. We know lenders are gonna be hurt by inflation, right? Because the money that they get back from borrowers isn't going to be worth as much as it 
as it had when the lender first gave it out to the borrower. Well, in this case, if we go back to the graph for a second, we will see that the actual inflation rate is less than the expected. So lenders are like, this is great. This is great. What I thought was going to happen isn't as bad. And therefore, the money I get back in return is going to be worth more. So in terms of explaining that, what I said, and this is kind of long-winded, but lenders face a lower than expected inflation rate and will be repaid money that has greater than expected purchasing power. So again, I mean, you could probably say that in fewer words than I did, but that's just the idea that lenders are going to get their money back and that money's not going to lose as much value as it did before. So lenders like this is great. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to address with this question is, and, um, and I think this is important to know, that if you in letter A, you know, you drew the graph and you're like, ah, I don't know where to put expected. And then in B, you put greater than. Well, if we look at C, it says, you know, assume, you know, lend, uh, loans are made taking that account. Will lenders be better off or worse off after what you saw in part B? So you can see that your answer to C is dependent upon what you put in B. So if you screwed up B, it's very likely that you're gonna, you, you, can, you can still get C right if you answer based off of what you did in B. So just be consistent there, and you should get points for the latter parts. Even though you don't get B correct, you could still get C correct if your answer was um, connected properly to B. So just keep that in mind. And finally, for letter D, it says, uh, based on the relationship between the actual and the expected inflation rates identified in Part A, what will happen to the natural rate of unemployment and here's the key in the long run. Well, if you watched my video for set one, question one, if you haven't, you know, go find it, it's there. Um, you'll know that there was part of that question where you had to do the long run adjustment, right? You shifted SRAS to the right in that case because it was a recessionary gap. And you'll notice that when we, when we moved to the long run, we didn't move LRAS, right? LRAS stayed put. Well, the only thing that really can move LRPC is LRAS. And so because LRAS hasn't changed, this uh, natural unemployment rate of 4% isn't going to change because LRPC is not going to move, okay? The, the, the adjustment to the long run doesn't require the long run curve to move. It doesn't move. And so the answer here is no change. So the long run unemployment rate, the natural rate of unemployment is not going to change. So that is all for this video on question two of set one of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics free response questions. Until next time, have a great day.